Now let's look at the DynamoDB pricing model. We have seen that DynamoDB provides two pricing options, provisioned capacity and on-demand capacity. So first the provisioned capacity, here you pay for the capacity that you provision, that is you provision number of reads and writes per second that your application requires and you pay accordingly. You can also use auto scaling to adjust the provision capacity on demand and provision capacity uses something called as read capacity units and write capacity units. So these are the units in which your provision capacity is calculated. And if you consume beyond your provision capacity that might result in throttling. Now I say that might result, that doesn't always result in throttling, but it might result in throttling because DynamoDB also provides some safeguards in terms of burst capacity and adaptive capacity. And we're going to look at that in one of the upcoming lectures. And along with provisioned capacity, you can also use what is called as a reserved capacity. That's something where you can purchase your provision capacity in bulk for a period of one to three years and then you get a huge discount on your provision capacity. So you're charged a one-time fee and then you pay an hourly fee per 100 RCUs and WCUs, that is read capacity units and write capacity units. So if you can predict your table's requirements for the next one year or next three years, you can definitely reduce your DynamoDB bill by using reserved capacity on top of the provision capacity. Then we have on-demand capacity. Here we don't have the concept of provisioning the capacity units. Instead, you pay per request. That is the number of read and write requests that your application makes. So there is no need to provision any capacity units. And this is especially good for uneven workloads. So DynamoDB instantly accommodates your workloads when they ramp up or ramp down very fast. And on-demand capacity uses something that's called as read request units and write request units. These are similar to the read capacity units and write capacity units, that is RCUs and WCUs, but these are called as read request units and write request units, that is RRU and WRUs, all right? And you cannot use reserved capacity with on-demand mode. If you're using the on-demand mode, then you cannot use the one-year or three-year term contract on your table. And we already talked about this, that the request units are equivalent to capacity units for the purpose of throughput calculation. And apart from the consumption, you also pay for storage, backup, replication, streams, caching, and data transfer. All right, then here we have a graph that represents provision capacity mode. So the red horizontal line is the capacity that you have provisioned on the table, whereas the curve that you see is your actual consumption. So you can see that there are two, three periods where you are going above the provision capacity, but if these bursts are short and narrow, then they often get tolerated and how that happens, we are going to take a look at that in a little while. But if the bursts are tall and wide, they may not get accommodated. So this can result in throttling and this is where auto scaling can help. So you can use auto scaling along with provision capacity mode to accommodate these larger bursts of capacity. And on the other hand, on-demand capacity mode works a little different. So we don't provision any capacity in the on-demand mode. So the curve here represents the number of requests. So you just pay for the number of requests that your application makes on the DynamoDB table. So what you pay for? In case of provision capacity mode, this is what you pay for. The shaded region is what you have provisioned and that's what you pay for. And for on-demand mode, you pay for the number of requests that your application makes at the runtime. So this is what you pay for. All right, so this is how both of these modes work.
so with provision capacity you know beforehand how much you're going to pay but that also can result in throttling with on-demand mode you generally won't see a lot of throttling but you cannot know beforehand how much consumption your application is likely to make so if you have a huge traffic spike in your application then you're of course going to pay a little more but that prevents any throttling that can occur there are certain situations where on-demand mode also gets throttled and we're going to talk about that in a bit 